Hi everybody, I'm Scott and I need a shave and a haircut. So if anyone wants to come over and, you know, I'm just kidding. Um, what I, what I actually am is a sucker for advertising, apparently. Because I saw this generic brown box advertised on Instagram and I picked it up. What is this? Yeah, well, it's in the video title, so you probably already know. It's the Remarkable Tablet. I say it weird like that because I'm sure it's at least a double entendre. Because, like, it's an e-ink tablet you can write on. So it's remarkable. Like, you can remark it. Remark on it. Actually, I guess it's a triple entendre. Because you can, like, mark on it and then remark on it. Because you can erase it. You can also write remarks on it. And it's also, presumably, they want you to think it's remarkable. Like, it's awesome. Because they have a marketing team. Um, but anyhow, let's take a look at this. By the way, this shipped from Hong Kong. It got here to New York in about three days, I think. So relatively quick shipping. Um, I did not know it was coming from Hong Kong. They don't really make that specific on their website. They seem like an American company, and maybe they are, and this is just sent and manufactured from Hong Kong. But uh, they could be a Hong Kongese company. Is that the correct way of saying Hong Kong person? I don't mean to be insulting if it's not. Ooh, okay. Well, the generic brown box reveals some uh, much nicer looking packaging. It, they actually make it look like fancy paper. Like the kind of box resume paper came in. I say came in because I don't know that anyone uses resume paper anymore. Or even has uh, written resumes, physical resumes. Um, and also I got the Marker Plus marking pen. So that you can use to write on it with. And... Oh, this is the case for it. So we'll take a look at that in a second. They offer a leather case. I opted for the polymer weave just because uh, I actually like that texture better. Um, personal preference. All right. Very nice. Kind of looks, this looks Amazon-ish almost. I don't know if this company has anything to do with Amazon whatsoever. A little welcome brochure. Yep, welcome quick start guide. Just for posterity, here it is. Turn it on, charge it, magnetically attach the marker, swipe, swipe, and blah, blah, blah. And then some helpful links on the back in case you don't know how to Google stuff. Cool. And this just says that. And then it also comes with presumably like FCC warnings and don't eat this, don't put it in your fridge, don't shove it up your ass, that sort of thing. So hopefully we don't need to go into detail there. It also comes with, ah, flat USB A to C cable. Feels like a nice quality cable. Feels like it has aluminum uh, ends to it. I like it. And then of course the tablet itself, which I'll just rip the paper off of it. I think there's a nicer way to take this to open this up, but uh, I should just point out, I'm not just a sucker for marketing. The morning that I bought this thing, I was in a meeting and I found myself scribbling on post-it notes like mad as people were saying stuff and I was, you know, trying to remember what they were saying by writing it down as people do. And I realized I had a ton of post-it notes all over my desk, not organized. I couldn't remember what was written when or why in some cases, which is kind of bad. Um, I guess don't tell my boss unless he's watching this. In which case, hello. So I figured this might be a good solution uh, when I saw it marketed to me. So, eh, remarkable. More like remarketable because the head came up a whole shitload of times after I bought it. <laughs> eh. Anyway. Oh, is this? I thought this was a coating on it. Is it a coating on it? No, I think this might be written in e ink. That's nifty. Yeah, that was actually written in the e-ink. I thought it was some kind of a uh, peelable protective film that had that written on it. It's a nice little touch. It's good use of e-ink. Okay, Remarkable is starting. Okay, jumps right into sort of a demo. Uh, do I need the special marker? Hmm, maybe. Let me open the special marker. Tear here. I've done it. Um, 
Ah. I also tore off part of the tab that's supposed to allow you to pull it out. But anyway, oh, it's a big box for a small little pen type thing. Oh, yeah. There we go. It's a little flag for you. I don't know what that is, actually. <laughs> I just randomly did that. Very nice. Uh, can I hit continue with my finger? Yes, you can continue with your finger, though. The canvas display creates a paper experience. Go try and see for yourself. Okay. So right away wants to connect to Wi-Fi. Uh, so far, this isn't the most responsive. Uh, I had to cut out that beginning part so you didn't see my password, but I'm just going to type the letter A. There's like quite a lag to that. And like A-S-D-F-C, it's like, yeah, not exactly snappy. All right, password's entered. Connecting. Well, that's connecting. I would like to talk about what I find to be a downside of this product or a potential upside, depending on how well it's implemented. And that's their cloud services. So you can buy this, I think, without a cloud subscription or with a very limited and inexpensive cloud subscription. But the feature set is very limited then. If you want the full feature set, you have to pay monthly, which... I'm kind of sketched out about, like, it's a drawing pad or a note-taking pad. Why do I need a cloud subscription? So I may or may not keep that subscription. I can't really judge that just yet because obviously I just got this thing. But the cloud uh, offloading of processes, like handwriting recognition, I assume, and other stuff like that, um, in addition to document storage, and well, I don't know what else it does, actually. We'll take a look at the product specs in a sec. I don't know if it's worth the monthly price for all that, and in general, I'm not a fan of things that use the cloud. And I put that in quotes because in case you didn't know, the cloud is just uh, like what's behind me. It's just a bunch of computers somewhere else that you don't know about. So the reason I don't like that is if this company, Remarkable, that I'd never heard of before, goes out of business tomorrow and all their cloud services go down, all of the features that are powered by the cloud for this product disappear immediately. So yeah, I stopped getting charged monthly, but this tablet becomes much less useful than it might otherwise have been. In general, that's a problem with cloud services, and one reason I don't like devices that are that should otherwise be standalone that use the cloud anyway or require the cloud. Like I said, I'm pretty sure this has functionality outside of the cloud because surely it must work if you're not connected to Wi-Fi. Like if you take it... Um, I don't know, whatever their marketing material could theoretically show, like on a beach or on a walk with a poodle or something like that. But uh, you definitely lose a lot of functionality without the cloud. Connect to Wi-Fi, great. So log in or create a new account. So I've already created an account when I bought this thing. I created it on their website. So I'm just going to log right in. Connect your device. Enter one-time code. Where did I get a one-time code? I'm holding my phone like this so that you can't see what's on the screen because it's all my emails and text messages, but I haven't received a one-time code from them. Oh, maybe this isn't that type of one-time code. Maybe I have to log in to their website and get a one-time code from there. Okay, so I've logged into my Remarkable account. I guess I should say it like that, Remarkable, and activated new Remarkable. So this must be the one-time code it wanted. I assumed it was sending it to me. Haha. Success. Your Remarkable is now connected to your account. Awesome. Download the desktop app. Why do I need a desktop app if I have this? I am left-handed, actually. Oh, is that going to turn it upside down? No, it didn't turn it upside down. What I mean is it has this holding area on the left side. So for a righty, you would write like this. But for a lefty, I got to like precariously hold it like this and then go like this. So I figured it would digitally turn the screen upside down if I activate it as a lefty. But I guess then the bottom is thicker than the top for holding purposes. So I'm assuming it's for ergonomics. It might also just be so they can cram circuitry down there. But uh, yeah, I, I assume that was what was going to happen. But no. Okay, so we got my files up there. You can filter it. Great. Notebook. Long press. Cool. Physical button is the power button. Also puts your remarkable to sleep mode. Great. Let's start creating. 
Okay, you can swipe left to right to turn pages. It does have multi-point touch, that's cool. So you can move two fingers apart to zoom in and out. And swipe up from the bottom of the document to open the scroll bar. Cool. Oh my god, there's a lot of information here. The thing I hate about these quick tutorials, like... Okay, none of this is... Well, okay, this is actually a lot of information. Okay, that's all about layers, is that I'm not going to remember all of this. So it's like, great. But you can feel free to pause it if you want to read any of this. Okay, so now I'm in the document. Now, my other thing as a lefty is I, t I drag my hand along as I write. So, let's see. No, okay. I was just worried, like, as I drag my hand along behind the pen, that would create marks on the, you know, paper. But it did not. Which, actually, if I'm writing with a pencil, it most certainly does. Or a ink that doesn't dry very quickly. So, that's also a plus for me. Because, actually, um, this is, in some sense, more convenient to write upon. So, then we got page two. My handwriting is awful, in case you didn't know. And then three. Yeah, that's an awful three. It looks more like a butt. No, it doesn't look like a butt either. It doesn't even look like anything. Yeah, like not super responsive, but... Uh, oh, okay, or not responsive at all. What the... Huh, okay, well, not very responsive at all, actually. Um, at least not all the time. It's a bit inconsistent. Oh, that just opens and closes the menu. Great. Tool settings, you can set the thickness of the writing implement. Yeah, all sort of like standard paint program um, things. Eraser. Great. Oh, erase selection is nice. Oh, you could draw a freeform selection and then erase that. Oh, yeah. I like that. And then I'm assuming there's an undo button. Yep. It's not very visible on screen, although you can see it. But you can see that line there where I drew the selection um, ring. So it still kind of stays there until the screen refreshes completely, I guess. Or maybe it did refresh completely and just got to refresh a couple more times before that disappears. But it will disappear. Page overview. Blah, blah, blah. I can send it. Who can I send it to? Oh, you can send it by email. Yeah, I had to blur that out because, well, it's still blurred out. But uh, I just wanted to comment that typing on this is a bit like typing on a first-generation Kindle. It's like you type a letter and then it appears and it's like very clunky. Well, to be fair, this is extremely thin. And one would hope that it has an extremely long battery life. If it does have an extremely long battery life, then for its size, I'm actually okay with it being a little sluggish, as long as it does what it ultimately is supposed to do. And sorry about all that blockiness, but my email address is still here. So I can add a message, set a file name, export as PDF, PNG, or SVG. I'll export as PNG. And then you can choose which page to export. Oh, or pages. Okay, yeah, let's export all the pages as PNG, so it'll probably come up as three different files, one would assume. And that's part of what's done on the cloud, I'm sure. Like, this is getting stored on the cloud probably as I'm writing it. And I don't think this is getting sent by email from this device. It's being uploaded to the cloud, then being sent from their servers to my email account. Undoubtedly. I'm kind of making that assumption, but I really doubt this thing has an SMTP client in it. So you can also store PDFs, which is nice. So you can use this as an e-reader. Well, there's also an e-book section, which is even more apropos to what I just said. But I guess PDFs would be good for white papers and other uh, documents. So that's cool. I should point out, you can import books in EPUB format through the desktop or mobile app. And you can organize into folders and stuff. Oh, update installed, tap to restart. Okay, I'm sure it's not just me. But a huge pet peeve of mine is when I get a new device and I'm excited to go and use it, and then it takes an hour of software updates before I can actually start using it. This thing, though, did the software update in the, back, in the background, or at least downloaded it in the background. And now it's going to reboot and install it, which is hopefully going to be relatively quick. I mean, this thing is, it can't have too much memory, I assume. Like I said, I think a lot is offloaded onto the cloud. I think hardware-wise, this is very simple. 
Yeah, so that was relatively quick for a uh, software update. Yeah, so here is a Wi-Fi signal and saying no cloud access. There's a cloud with an X underneath it. See what happens if we click on the battery icon? Nothing. On the Wi-Fi icon? Nothing. Settings. My account, subscription plan, software version. Oh, you can put it into airplane mode. Wi-Fi, of course. Battery. Auto sleep. You can, oh, you can automatically put it to sleep after 20 minutes of inactivity or not. That's nice. So, okay, uh, about 7 gigs of storage on a tablet that's available. I'm going to guess, therefore, it has 8 gigs of flash memory and probably a gig for the operating system and interface and, um, you know, this application that runs on the tablet all the time. USB web interface, interesting. I just checked the cloud sync, no syncing errors found, great. Security, I'm not gonna put a passcode on this because yeah, I don't need to. It's nice to know that it has it though in case you have sensitive work documents on here. And then handedness, um, and font size, normal or large. So yeah, as far as the interface goes and the software goes on the tablet, not a lot to it, but you wouldn't really expect there to be a lot to it. I mean, it's a note-taking tablet. What I do like about it, though, is the hardware feels very nice. It's very thin. It feels very solid. There's no flex to it. And it has a nice textured back. Uh, another pet peeve of mine, not that anyone asked, is cell phones with either very shiny metal backs or glass backs. Because... They, they're very slippery. Like, I never used to have a case on my cell phone because I always treated them relatively well. It usually stays in my pocket or, you know, on my desk or on the couch. So not too much has happened to them over the years. I never felt like I needed a case, except when I got the Google Nexus 6, which was made by Huawei, I think, and it had a very slippery aluminum rear surface to it. And I just found it falling out of my hands quite frequently because you couldn't get a good grip on it unless you had your hand all the way around it, which, you know, can sometimes be non-ergonomic to use your, uh, to get your thumb across the screen. But I digress. The point is this has a textured, I don't know if it's glass or just a plastic that has a glassish look to it, but it's textured. It, it doesn't feel slippery. It doesn't feel like it's going to pop right out of my hand if I'm not careful with it. Yeah, hardware-wise, it feels very good. And I'm not going to do a teardown on this because I, <laughs> um, if you saw my last video, that was a one-way journey for the Amazon Glow. And this, I have a feeling I would manage to screw up even worse because it is very um, tightly put together. And I'm not sure how to open it properly without breaking it. And unfortunately, uh, it's relatively expensive. So while I don't miss the Glow too much because I had no use for that, I, I, I would miss this if I broke it. So um, sorry if you were expecting a teardown. That's why I didn't put it in the video title, because it doesn't exist. The teardown, I mean, not the device. Very quickly, I suppose we could take a look at the case for it. This is just in case you're considering buying one, and you want to know... Okay, it says tear here, and this ain't tearing. Oh my god, what is this made of? Well, scissors can tear it, as one would expect. Oh, it's branded. Not that that's a huge downside, it's just, uh, I don't know, I, I like my cases to be generally unbranded and ironically unremarkable, mostly so that like, people don't know what's in them. Ah, so it magnetically attaches, there's a grooved plastic piece right here, which has magnets in it, I would assume, because the tablet clicks right into it, like that, and seems to hold it very nicely. And uh, yeah, there it is. It has a nice feel to it. The fact that it just attaches by those magnets, though, yeah, ooh, that's, um, that's not ideal. You know, like a cell phone case, or even like, I have a similar case for my Amazon Paperwhite, and that actually has bumpers all around the side that, like, lock into it as a cell phone case does. So this, you can't really treat like that. I mean, it's not like, it's not like falling out immediately, but when you put it in your luggage or something, if it gets smacked around a little although the case doesn't seem very actually the, the case is pretty stiff 
So it should offer a reasonable amount of protection for its thickness, but yeah, this thing might fall out of it. Oh, I forgot one thing about the marker for the Remarkable is that I think the back of this is an eraser. Oh, it like half acidly erases it. What? If I, oh, if you put more pressure. Oh no, I think the screen just refreshed. Ah, I happened to do enough of this. I think the screen decided to refresh. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to put too much pressure and break the thing. Yeah, then the screen just refreshed, but you can still see the outline of what was there before. So this... Oh, I'm still on uh, race mode. Ballpoint pen. Oh. No, oh, how silly of me. I didn't even realize you could choose your uh, type of pen. Mechanical pencil, even. Yeah, so the pencil definitely does a different sort of uh, texture to it. Like, this is a pencil line... And this is a ballpoint pen line. And the ballpoint pen line, as you would expect, is more solid than the pencil line. That's that's cool. Paintbrush. Yeah, it does look like pressure makes a difference. Like if I just, if I very gently rest it on there, it doesn't do anything. But then if I push a little harder and a little harder and a little harder, it gets like a bigger and bigger dot. That's nice. Highlighter. I mean, it's black and white, so like, yeah, it's it's highlighting, but it's not... Oh, it got dimmer now. What? Let's do that after a period of time. And it does do that after a period of time. Okay. And calligraphy pen. Oh, fancy. I mean, that's simulated. It doesn't matter how you hold this pen, because this is just symmetrical all the way around, I would guess. Let's see if I turn it. Yeah. Doesn't matter how you turn the pen, it writes the same. So I think it's just like vertical lines come in thick and horizontal lines come in thin. So, yeah, neat. I thought I'd bring up their website just so I could talk about their remarketing materials. And I realized this is the Remarkable 2 that I have, not just the Remarkable. So I could go back and refilm that introduction, but I'm not going to. Uh, this was the Remarkable 2 that we've been looking at. Yeah. I don't think they still sell the one, though. Yeah, they only sell accessories for the one. So if you're in the market for one of these, it's going to be the two that you're going to be buying, unless you buy it on the used market, like eBay, in other words. So, of course, replace your notebooks and printed paid documents with this thing. Great. List it on things. Convert your handwritten notes to text. I'm pretty sure that's done in the cloud. Take notes directly on PDFs. I like that. And I like the paper, like reading and writing. Um, sometimes it's just more comfortable to read on e-paper rather than... A glossy TFT screen. At least I have that experience with the Kindle. It really is. It really did have a nice feel to it, as far as writing on it. It doesn't feel like paper, but it doesn't feel like you're writing on a slick piece of glass either. So I do like the texture aspect of it. I'm trying to get to the part where it's like you need to buy a plan, and here's basically why. Subscribe to connect. Here we go. Unlimited cloud storage. Great. I don't, yeah, you can't get the Google Drive and Dropbox in integration without their Connect subscription, which is kind of ironic, considering like this would be your cloud storage then, so why do you need them? But the handwriting conversion is done there, screen share is okay, and more powerful features, which is very vague. I don't know if this claim is true. I'm not going to comment on that, but it is freaking thin. I'll give them that. It's a very thin tablet. It does feel nice. So even if they're not being 100% truthful as the world's thinnest tablet, it is definitely thin and definitely well made as far as feel goes. So I'm okay with that. I'm not okay so much with this uh, with the folio and its magnetic connection, but okay. So there were two marker options. I opted for the marker plus with built-in eraser as opposed to the marker. And it's a bit of a like, just sell one at a relatively low price, like whatever. And the Plus is a little heavier, which I think it's a good weight. I like a bit of a weightier pen. That's just my preference, though. So here, here's the tech specs, in case you're wondering. I'll just save you the time of looking it up. It has a dual-core arm running at 1.2 gigahertz. So a fairly slow and low-core processor by today's standards. Only 1 gig of RAM and, as I suspected, 8 gigs of internal storage. 
the screen is not incredibly high resolution, but it is pretty high. I mean, 226 DPI is not bad and it does look good. So I, I have no problem with that. It supports 2.4 and 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi. I like that as a standard USB-C port. I mean, pretty much everything does nowadays. And I'm figuring on a three amp hour battery, it'll run for a fairly long time with this low power processor, which I'm guessing is one of the reasons they put a low power processor in this. I mean, you know, let's be honest, part of it might be cost savings, but part of it also is probably to keep it lasting as long as it can on the batteries. Now, so here's where my potential problem comes in. Subscribe for the full remarkable experience. Cancel any time. I like the cancel any time. That's fine. Um, but no plan, just the basics, all your notes in one place. So all you can do is pretty much write on this thing and save stuff to the local device, which is fine. I'm okay with that. Five bucks a month just for unlimited cloud storage. Five bucks a month just for unlimited cloud storage. We're not talking storing videos or audio files or anything large here. We're talking about storing documents and maybe some black and white pictures. There's going to be a very small amount of storage that you're going to use unless you're some kind of like ridiculous power user. Um, even then, I don't think you could use more than a few gig with this kind of content. I mean, I guess if you're storing a lot of PDFs or a lot of eBooks um, in the cloud, sure. I mean, but even those are not huge. By comparison, I think I get 100 gigs of Google Drive storage for this much a year. And I think it's $1.99 a month for Google Drive for 100 gigs of storage if you pay monthly for a Google One subscription. I just say that to put this pricing in perspective that all you're getting for five bucks a month is cloud storage and not a lot of it. Now I got the Connect plan to try it out. Whether I keep it or not, I might just go with no plan eventually just so I can use this as a notepad basically. But this comes with, of course, unlimited cloud storage. Then this, this is where you get the Google Drive and Dropbox integration which I think should be just the basics, frankly, because then it's not even on their cloud. It would be on Google's cloud, although then they would have to integrate Google's cloud and Dropbox's cloud with their device itself, as opposed to going through the intermediary of Remarkable servers. And this is also the only way to get handwriting conversion, which is kind of a big deal, but I understand offloading the processing power that that requires in order to keep this device light and small and have a long battery life. A screen share, okay, I, I get that's cloud thing. And then more powerful features again. I'm not sure what they're pitching there. So unlimited cloud storage is what it sounds like. Without this feature, only your files used in the last 50 days will be stored safely in the cloud and stay updated in our apps. Okay, so you still get, I guess, they don't make that clear that you may get with basic, you do get some cloud storage. It's just if you don't touch the documents, they disappear from the cloud, but not your device. So I'm fine with that kind of, but again, Unlimited is fairly meaningless when you're talking about storing documents nowadays. Like documents barely take up any space and storage is so cheap that I, I just don't see why that wouldn't be free or extremely cheap. And you do save money on the hardware when you buy a Connect plan, which is originally what made me do it, I think, or that's what threw me over the edge. Also, like I said, I wanted to try it. I guess these are the more powerful features or are these just the extra benefits? What are the more powerful features? But anyway, you save money, you get a better guarantee and a better warranty if you buy it with Connect. So fine. All right, you're welcome to go look at the website, of course, if you want, if you're interested in buying this thing. I'm not recommending it, not yet. The jury's still out. It is expensive. And with the Connect plan, not being a requirement, but I would say being important, you know, that's it's definitely something to consider. What I do want to check is if you hook this up to a computer, can you access the files? So in other words, if you don't have a connect plan, if you don't have the cloud storage plan, and granted it stays for 50 days in the cloud if you, as long as you touch the files, but if you want to back this up to your computer, can you do that? All right, I had to get a longer USB cable to reach my USB hub, which connects to the computer. It's connected to the whole video system. But just for the record, the Remarkables USB cable is about three feet. I would say a meter because it seems like a slightly longer than three feet. And since it came from Hong Kong, I would assume it's measured metric as things should be. And I should point out the Remarkables USB port is right here down in the lower left corner. So let's plug it in and, oh, it's sleeping. I don't want to, I think I hit the uh, power button by accident. So let's plug it in and see what happens on the old computer. Huh, it's not showing up as a thing. 
Weird. So maybe the USB port is just for charging. Well, that's kind of disappointing. I mean, so you basically have to use their cloud if you want to get any documents off of this tablet. So for me, that's a big... <laughs> like, this should come up as a, you know, Windows file device. Or on a Mac, uh, some kind of file device anyway. Um, but I think the USB port is just for charging. Yeah, I mean, I guess you could email your documents to yourself. But again, I think that goes through their cloud. So without any kind of cloud connection, all you can do is have documents on here and just use them on here. That's not good. Like I said, if Remarkable goes out of business, if they shut down their whole uh, cloud server setup, you are SOL then as far as getting any documents on or off of this thing. Uh, uh, one more little piece of trivium, which I do like a lot about this, is there are four feet on the back. They're very small feet and they're rubberized. The reason this is good, and I'm sure this is why they did it, is because if this is sitting on the table, you can actually get your fingers under it to pick it up. Um, otherwise, if it's, let me just make sure there's nothing. Otherwise, if it's on the table flat, it's like a little harder to get underneath it and it actually suction to the table a little bit. So, and it, it also has a better feel as far as uh, when it's laying there and it doesn't move around, which actually might be the real impetus for doing that. So while you're writing on it, this thing doesn't shift around on a surface. Which, by the way, maybe the leather version is a little different, but this is, well, not slippery. You definitely don't get that grippiness from those feet if you have it in the case. And that being said, I would use the case for travel, like if I was going to pop this in my bag. And in that sense, it's good that it's magnetic because I would probably just take it out of the case in order to use it. Whereas my Kindle always stays in the case, and I actually find the case a little better for just holding onto it. But this, I definitely like the feel of it a lot without the case. So I'm sure many of you are looking for a conclusion and a recommendation. I would recommend the hardware, but I wouldn't recommend this as an overall product. Because while the hardware seems very nice, I mean, like I said, a little sluggish, but I think that's only because it has a slow processor to have long battery life, which is a, a good trade-off. And I think on a product like this, long battery life should be the taken trade. So that's not a real complaint about the hardware. I mean, it, isn't it isn't it's a complaint but i understand why they did it and i'm okay with it so i'd still recommend the hardware it feels very nice looks very nice works as it should but the fact that you can't do anything with this once you have it without a cloud subscription is kind of a bummer like i said for free with a remarkable account it will store your documents apparently for 50 days in the cloud as long as you mess with the documents within those 50 days and then i guess the timer resets so that's kind of fair but the pricing for the unlimited cloud storage and their other features is high, in my opinion, for what it does or for what it gives you. And I really hate the reliance of this device on their cloud existing. Like if this was a product released by Amazon or Google and they promised to support it for five years, you know, at least then, you know, they're going to be around. I'm not sure who is this company anyway. This is a bit of a tangent, but um, I did not look at the about us uh is this a mistake i can't click on that and these buttons are on top of those buttons uh oh uh remarkable you got a slight problem with your website uh, let's see if on the home page it works yay on the home page it works this was founded by magnus wenberg wanberg magnus wanberg I like it. It's a cool name. I'm trying to find the actual corporate name of this company. But based on the About Us, it doesn't seem to be owned by a giant corporation that can be guaranteed to be around forever. Or if not forever, for at least the next five years or so, while you'd still get use out of this device. Let's see, contact. Oh, Norway. Okay, so this shipped from Hong Kong, but the business is located in Norway. Very nice. Was this a Kickstarter? Okay, so Remarkable got its funding from Spark Capital, and it was launched not on Kickstarter or Indiegogo, but with its own independent crowdfunding campaign. Okay, so this is not a Kickstarter thing. I should have looked that up before I did the video, but there you go. That, if that answers your burning question, um, glad to be of service. So yeah, again, to summarize, hardware great, cloud thing, not so much. What I would love, and this is sort of a general comment, 
for companies like this that are heavily reliant on a cloud. And when I'm thinking about my house, like that's my Ecobee for my thermostat, which needs the cloud in order to communicate with the thermostat, even from my phone in my own house, which I've covered in another video. Um, my Ring products. And I think that's really it. I try to avoid cloud-based stuff as much as possible. But what I would really love for these hardware yet cloud-based products to do is for their companies to issue a promise, a legally binding promise, to release their server software as open source if and when they decide to discontinue support of the product or if their company dissolves or becomes bankrupt. Like there needs to be some way of getting that server side software out there so that someone else can take up the mantle and start hosting it. And, you know, even potentially charging people or not. But once it's open source, then all sorts of things become possible and it's much better for everyone. I have no problem with a company making money by selling cloud products. Like, I understand there's a need for it in many cases. Like, for example, with the Ring video doorbell system, most people don't want a hard drive based DVR sitting in their house somewhere. And also by having the video recordings off site, it's better for security because this way, if your house gets robbed and your DVR gets stolen with standard security cameras, you have no evidence. But if it's uploaded to the cloud every time there's an event, well, then unless they can gain access to your cloud account, you still have them on camera. So in some cases, cloud, cloud services are great and I have no problem with them and I have no problem paying for them. It's just in cases like this, like just let me take the files off via the USB. I mean, for fuck's sake, like is that so much to ask? Because if you go out of business, then this tablet is now just, it has a Wi-Fi connection, but nothing that I can do with that Wi-Fi connection. Unless someone reverse engineers the server side of this and uh, gets it to work and does a firmware hack or something to get it to connect to other servers. So I just wanted to put that out there because I have a feeling that's something that a lot of people don't consider when they buy a product like this is ongoing support and the requirement of the cloud to use this device. And in this case, to use this device to even a fair degree of what it can do. I mean, even if you just want to put PDFs on here, if you can't access through the USB port and it's only via the cloud, then like I said, you can't even do the simplest of things like load a document on here if their cloud service goes away. So that's sort of my rant. That's a quick look at the Remarkable. Well, maybe not so quick, but if you're curious about what it looks like and how it works, there you go. Uh, I've been Scott. You can, you know, you can subscribe and like the stuff. Um, Subscribe and like to stuff. It's not a sentence. I mean, it's a sentence. It's not a good sentence. Yeah. Shit. And scene. <laughs> okay, I got the PC and Mac version of the desktop app installed and synced up using a one-time code that was available via the website. And uh, they look, well, remarkably similar, pun intended, I guess. And in fact, it looks remarkably like the software on the tablet itself, only this appears to be view only. Um, can't draw on this. Now you can import. Okay, so I just imported Snow Crash from Neil Stevenson and it just appeared on the tablet. That's brilliant. And if I open it up, we got the uh, cover art, which is in color on the computer, but of course black and white here because the screen only does black and white. And then I think we can swipe to turn pages. Can we not? Is it still like loading the book maybe? Oh, it's uh, no, 0% red, but it's, it seems to be synced. Oh yeah, I could totally deface a masterwork of Neil Stevenson. Great. Now oh, there we go. I just didn't want to swipe at first, but... Yeah, I mean, the, the screen looks very nice. The text is extremely readable. Um, it, it does look great. Like I said, I am a fan of the hardware. And, you know, the software, while not robustly featured, it looks like, um, does seem to work. And you can see, by the way, earlier I highlighted this area, and of course it just came out in very light gray on the tablet, but here it actually came up as yellow, which is nice. A little more readable. Now one thing I might have spoken too soon about is the lack of, of USB support for the tablet to transfer things on and off. 
So what I'm going to do is put the tablet in airplane mode and then try to connect the USB now that I have the software installed because maybe I require the software to be installed to allow the tablet to communicate with the computer via USB. Um, again, via the software instead of the cloud. So let's close out of there. I'm going to go into settings, Wi-Fi. And I guess I can just turn Wi-Fi off and I don't need full airplane mode because that should be sufficient to disconnect me from the cloud. So now I should have no way to communicate other than via the USB port, potentially. So I'm going to plug in the USB port whilst showing the computer. So I'm plugging in the USB port now. And I want to see if anything changes there. Okay, it looks like nothing has changed here. Let's see if maybe it installed a driver that allows it to see the tablet as a drive. Nope. Still nothing else there. Okay. Kind of unfortunate. But maybe it is communicating with it. So what I'm going to do is we'll go into notebooks. And then on the tablet, I'm actually just going to go in and create a new notebook. We'll just call it E. Actually, I'm make this a, let's make this a line notebook. Okay, now in theory, I guess that should just sync over to the app. I'm actually going to unplug the USB port and plug it back in. And if it syncs, it should show another notebook here, but so far it hasn't. Okay, I did a little bit of digging through Device Manager. And this is the device of the tablet. Or rather, this is the device that shows up in Device Manager when the tablet's connected. As soon as I disconnect the tablet, that disappears. And if I reconnect it, it should come back. So there is definitely some kind of intelligent device in there. Now this is a fairly generic driver because if we look at the date, it's from 2006. So I can't imagine that this is anything terribly specific to the tablet. Um, and in fact, it says IBM on it, not remarkable. So I don't know if that's just not enabled in the software or it's not actually capable of transferring files on and off the tablet. I, I don't know. The, the point is there's no simple way to access the tablet via USB. I kind of hope they change that. And now just for sanity's sake, um, what I'm going to do is just to show that it does sync, I'm going to turn the Wi-Fi back on. And down here, we'll see it connect to the Wi-Fi with this wee little icon when that turns black with a full signal. And then the cloud got an arrow, and that made a brief sinking exclamation. I don't know. And, of course, now we immediately see it in the app. And just to be certain, yes, it's there also in the Mac app. So, yeah, a very simple document viewer and document importer that's really all the app seems to be um, you can export documents from it show them full screen otherwise there's not really much to it these apps are very simple and just for completeness i guess i will show the app on the google play store um, on android i'm not going to show the ipad or ios version because uh well We've already taken enough time, and I'm going to guess it's going to be the same functionality as the desktop app and as the Android app. 26, 27 megabyte download, and get a one-time code. And now I have to log into the website on the tablet, as opposed to it just giving me a one-time code on the, well, on the other tablet, on the Remarkable tablet, which is kind of the standard way of doing things, you would think. But whatever. I mean, because let's face it, if someone has access to the tablet, they might as well get the code there because they already have access to all your files anyway. So, yeah. Okay, and there's our one-time code. Copy to clipboard. That was convenient. It also takes a very long time to verify the one-time code. I don't think all this time is verifying. It's probably also syncing stuff in the background, maybe. Although, no, it seems to be syncing now, so I don't know what it was doing just then. But there we go. Syncing the documents. Brilliant. 
And if we go into the menu, yep, it is the same menu essentially that you would find on the Windows or Mac OS app. Sync using Wi-Fi only though, that's a good option to have here. And you can disconnect the app if you want to. Now the one thing is this doesn't have, or it doesn't seem to have an export function, although maybe you can export from within one of these documents, no. Ah, if you hold down on it, you can share it, favorite it, rename it, copy, move, move to trash. And I guess share would allow you to save it somewhere. Yeah, you could save it then wherever you want. I just figured I'd include this epilogue because I know some people are just going to want to find out what the app looks like and how it functions. And also, some of you might have questioned whether or not I, the app would have allowed the USB connection to work. And in fact, I questioned myself on that after I made the video. And I was like, wait a minute, maybe if I installed the app, then I could sync via USB. I guess not. Now, granted, I only tried on the PC version. Maybe the Mac version lets you do it. Kind of doubt it because it looks like very much the same app. It's probably written in the same framework. My guess is the Windows and Mac apps are both written in the same framework. And then that framework is just specific to each platform, but the contents is the same. Same way that um, a lot of mobile apps are developed where it's in essence the same app for iOS and Android. It's just wrapped in a different framework so that it's kind of, kind of abstracted from the platform and from the operating system. So anyway, um, yeah, I hope that may have answered some of your questions. And uh, if you have any more, leave them in the comments below. You can also find me on social media, Scott dot dot. Wait, I did that on the screen. That's backwards. I always forget. I got to go this way because it's like mirror imaged. Yeah, Scott dot dot. You're welcome. I, for what? I don't know. Bye.